deliberately situated in the harshest areas of Russia, prisoners were turned into slave laborers and worked to death. Huge industrial schemes like the Dnieper Dam or the Bellamore Canal became a living hell for hundreds of thousands who died during their construction. Nobody told us anything whatsoever, no reason why we, why we there, why they took us there, you know, what we've done wrong, why, why we were there. Nobody told us anything. We've just been taken as a slave, you know. Maria Sklugotsky was 18 years old in 1939 when she and her entire family were deported from their home in southern Poland to a labor camp in Siberia. People were start packed, we could hardly move at all in the train. But I know a lot of people, I was, I was seeing some people and children thrown away from the train when they were dead, that's it. Nobody was buried. After a three-month train journey, Maria and her family arrived in Krasnoyarsk in eastern Siberia. We had to go to work, you see, to forest. Because they says, if you don't go to work, we don't get any food whatsoever. We were working, cutting trees, you know, and that in forest. I had to walk on my knees from tree to trees, you know, because snow was very, very high. If you walk, you should just fall deep in it. People die just like flies. Children, and particularly young people, nearly all died. You die, you die, that's it. Not that their fates would ever move Stalin. He once commented, one death is a tragedy, a million deaths is simply a statistic. At the beginning of the 1930s, Stalin's grip on power in Russia was absolute, and for the people of the Soviet Union, it would become the bloodiest decade of his rule. I think that by the end of the 1920s, Stalin was in the grips of some form of paranoia and saw himself surrounded by enemies, internal, external, in the party, in the country, and the terror to some extent was driven by his own paranoid fears. What became known as the Great Terror began at the Communist Party Congress in 1934, where Stalin was expecting his re-election as party secretary to be a formality. To his horror, 300 of the delegates voted against his nomination, and only three against the popular party favorite, Kirov. That reinforced his sense that there was um, a faction in the party uh, who were trying to unseat him, and he then began to see enemies everywhere. Stalin's revenge for this treachery was swift. Kirov was assassinated in mysterious circumstances later that year. Of the 1,961 delegates who had attended the 17th Congress, 1,108 of them were shot. Of the 139 Central Committee members, 98 were shot. The purges were a device to really to um, consolidate the new discipline that Stalin was imposing on the society. Everybody knew that if you didn't give total loyalty and visible dedication to Stalin, you could be sent to the cellars of the Lubyanka and executed immediately, or you could be sent to prison or camp for 25 years, and many were. From their headquarters in the Lubyanka, the NKVD, under Stalin's orders, spread fear throughout the country. Thousands were arrested and accused of everything from spying and sabotage to plotting Stalin's assassination. Stalin himself signed thousands of death warrants. One word. One movement of his finger would change the fate of millions of people, the fates of whole nations. Boris Yefimov was one of the Soviet Union's leading political caricaturists during the 30s. His brother Koltsov, a writer, was a victim of Stalin's terror. My older brother was a very well-known, popular figure, very energetic, intelligent, an independent person. 
Stalin, Stalin, Stalin didn't like this sort of person. He only liked those who fulfilled his orders without any hesitation. At last, the day, or the night to be precise, of Koltsov's fate arrived. On the night of February the 2nd, 1940, after a year in an NKVD prison, Koltsov was shot. As the brother of one of Stalin's enemies, Boris Yefimov was also targeted for arrest. To be compassionate was not in his nature. Why did he spare me then? The answer is simple. He liked my drawings. In exile in Mexico, Stalin's old enemy Trotsky was murdered with an ice pick in 1940. The army that Trotsky founded was itself purged. 40,000 officers were arrested, almost 15,000 shot, and the rest sent to camps to be worked to death. Stalin was more or less saying to the people of the Soviet Union, look, nobody is beyond my reach. Nobody is safe. Not only did Stalin execute his victims, he erased them from history altogether. He spared no one. Nikolai Yeshov, the NKVD commander, was arrested and shot in 1940. Stalin made him disappear too. Not even Stalin's wife, Nadezhda, survived the Great Terror. Driven to despair by his treatment of her, during a party in 1932 for his ministers, she left the room and shot herself. <laughs>